Hey guys, welcome back to my Fusion 360 tutorial series. Um, this is episode number three, and last time we talked about sketches and how to create the objects you see on the screen right now. And today we are going to be talking about beveling edges and rounding edges, which Fusion 360 calls um, chamfer for beveling, or um, fillet or fillet for um, rounding off edges. I'm not actually sure how you pronounce it, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Um, so I guess just pronounce it however you want to pronounce it. Now these two subjects are pretty simple, so this episode shouldn't be too long, um, but you can do some pretty powerful things with these, so let's get into it. Let's start really simple with chamfer. So let's just select these edges here and say that we want to just put a little bit of a bevel on there. What we can do is come up, and I've got these as shortcuts, and by the way, if you want to create a shortcut, all you have to do is click this little icon here, this little arrow, the Add to Toolbar, and it will pop it up here so you don't have to click these um, drop downs every time you want to use something. So that type of customizability is really nice. But um, otherwise, you just come to Chamfer right here, and you can see that it gives us an option to push in on these edges. And you can do some pretty powerful things with this. Now, in its simplest form, you just have a one millimeter chamfer here. Um, and that gives a really nice finishing touch and it can actually take a lot of your models from looking like they were made by someone who's just throwing shapes together to a little bit more professional looking. And now you can do a lot more crazy things with this as well. So let's say that we wanted this to be at a different angle. We have a couple options. You can go um, either two distances or distance at an angle. Let's check out two distances first. So now it gives us two options here, two arrows. And as you can see, let's try and click this one here. As I drag this in, it's not actually moving any lower on the model. It's just moving this in to give us more of a slight angle there. And you can do the same down here. And we can also do the same thing for distance and an angle. So now we've got the distance that we can go in. You can change the angle of the slope here. So whatever you'd like to do there, I'm gonna keep it at equal distance and set it back to one, because I think that looks pretty good. So now with this cylinder up here, you can do the same thing. You can go chamfer and it actually gives a really nice looking curve there. But I wanna do something a little different with this. Let's put a rounded edge there. So I'm gonna to come to fillet and basically the same thing. It just rounds it off and you can actually round it to the point that it is almost completely round. And that can give nice effects as well. And now you may notice that if I keep going to a certain point, it's gonna snap back and give me this error down in the bottom. And that is just basically saying that the algorithms that Fusion 360 is trying to use to um, round off these edges can no longer perform once you've hit that specific radius that you're trying to do. And that is basically just because this other geometry gets in the way. And sometimes that can be pretty frustrating, but um, just keep messing with it, try a couple different things, and you'll eventually get it the way you want it. I'm gonna leave that as one as well, and I think that looks pretty good. Something else to keep in mind is you can kind of use this to blend between objects as well. So you can see that right there, that's a pretty hard edge. If we wanted that to be less, we can come into fillet again or fillet and drag that out and you can see it slopes into this. So you can create some really nice effects with that as well. And you can even do this on crazy edges like this. So let's create a fillet here. And you can see it follows that pretty perfectly. And that's a nice effect. And we can even do the same thing on the inside. Just select all of these lines and go one. And now you can actually see that we ran into that issue there. And I'm actually guessing that the issue is from this corner. But there's not a lot of ways around that. So I'm just going to try to reduce it to 0 0.5. And it's not even happy about that. Um, I can do 0.1. It, it even complains at 0.2. So we'll just go 0.15 and leave it at that. So if you wanted to combat that, you would have to come in and modify this shape and try to get not such a sharp angle there. But I won't get into that here. So let's just try to smooth this out as well. I think that actually gives a pretty nice effect. And then I'm actually just gonna chamfer that off. So you should hopefully be starting to see how you can use these things to your advantage. Um, and a lot of times it's just something aesthetic. A lot of times it can be functional. 
Um, and actually, I've been able to create most of the models I've created using these techniques. Like um, a lot of the curved surfaces on Clank were created by using this fillet tool and just getting it to the curves I needed. So that's pretty cool. And um, you know, you can obviously do extreme things like pushing in one of these corners and rounding it off this way. So instead of having to go in and create some sort of crazy curve like that, you can just do this and you can do the same thing with chamfer. So they're very powerful tools that Fusion 360 has. Um, and as I said before, they can be a little temperamental, but just experiment. I mean, that's that's mostly what you're doing. Because um, obviously when you come in here, you know what kind of shape you want in your mind and um, just keep messing with things until you get that shape. Okay guys, well, I hope this was helpful and I think I'm gonna leave this episode at that. In the next tutorial, we are gonna be talking about the timeline. And that is where Fusion 360 really gets its power. So look forward to that. That's all from me, guys. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.